As always guys, this is just for entertainment purposes only, this is not financial advice. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. We need to talk about agronomics. Agronomics stock has been <laughs> pretty badly down this year. Global markets, we are in crisis. There is huge food inflation. We can see a 22% eggs inflation, chicken inflation, milk, uh, beef, pork, fish. All these things that the agronomics companies are going to produce and they are able to produce it in the future of course with clean energy and they can also produce it uh, automatically and at a stable price i'm going to go in a bit deeper later in this video on how that is um, but of course yeah, the question is is inflation good or bad for the agronomics companies you would think that uh, with all these inflationaries going up that uh, governments around the world are thinking about investing. At the same time, the increasing inflation does make it more difficult uh, for, um, for companies to loan. Um, and then that's, yeah, you can see here, this is an article about the VC <laughs> uh, Nex in Singapore warning founders on how to adapt to the funding winter. They think there will be a winter like a not a crypto winter but a vc winter for about two years and it's actually um this this is exactly what the same thing i was thinking uh this inflation is not going to go away soon we're going to be in high inflationary times and companies like a fortune few in the agronomics portfolio that have to loan and borrow a lot um will suffer higher costs due to inflation so we can see here, Bnex is uh, saying their comp uh, portfolio companies to reset and adapt to the current market downturn. Basically, they made the division between the 18 months runaway companies, so that's companies that run out of money in 18 months. <laughs> so at that point, they would go uh, bankrupt. They say, stop experimenting on new ideas, uh, start going. Uh, start focusing more on monetization, start becoming profitable, freeze new hires and make sure you can move on, you can continue for another 24 months. It's very unlikely there will be a lot of VC money coming in <laughs> uh, in that time. So survival is going to be the first priority for the coming 24 months. Um, that, that could also be the case. We know we have a lot of startups in the agronomics portfolio and it's really hard to say uh how they are going to do but it's not unlikely to think that a few of them are not going to survive the coming 24 months and here it is you can see like especially um these here at the bottom i uh, see bond pet foods we saw that um, agronomics has created good dog food and that makes me wonder how is bond pets doing i mean why would agronomics create good dog food if bond pet food was doing well um i don't know or maybe they had just a second opportunity otherwise the market is large enough um but it's not it's not unlikely that a few of these would go bankrupt i don't think the bigger ones will go bankrupt you had vitro labs actually getting an extra investment um, so yeah, I think generally, uh, most companies here will do well. I will explain a little bit further why else I will, I think they will do well. So one a new investment that Agronomics has done was an investment in Liberation Labs. Liberation Labs is a startup, uh, fermentation company. And I have the impression that Agronomics is really starting to like, uh, these fermentation companies. Uh, but also alternative companies, you have uh, Solar Foods and Vitro Labs because they simply do not require regulatory approval and they have a much faster time to market. Um, so looking at the financials, we see that Agronomics were able to get a 47% stake for 627,000. I've never seen Agronomics get a 47% stake. Uh, so that's crazy and I think this could be an indication of how hard it is for startups to get funding right now because they got such a huge stake or it could be just that they're late to the market and they don't need that much money. It's very hard to say, 
until we actually see uh, Jim, Jim Mellon or someone from Agronomics explaining this better. But if I would have to guess, that would be the reason. Um, but good for us, uh, Agronomics has a really big cash cushion. We have 50,000, uh, we have 50 million pounds in cash or almost 50 million. So that's really, really good for us. Uh, fortunately, it also means that some of our investments that Agronomics did, like for example, uh, we have in vitro labs and we see that in vitro labs got a lot of funding and it's right in time before the VC winter. 56, uh, 46 million um, and what we saw here was the equity ownership of agronomics went down it was 14 percent before now it's 10 percent and this for me gives an indication that investments that agronomics has done in 2021 so it's not all the investments i don't want to generalize might be worth now a little bit less and uh, not that much but a little bit less than they were before uh, another investment that Agronomics has done was creating a uh, cultivated meat pet food venture. And then, yeah, as I said, I'm wondering how is Bond Pets doing? But uh, because before I did see a lot of good news from Bond Pet Foods. Uh, so now, yeah, where, where is that uh, company going right now? Anyway, there is really no financial data here. Uh, I have no idea. I'm guessing it's going to be a joint venture. So I'm thinking 50-50. Uh, Rosen Technologies bringing in the technology. Agronomics bringing in the cash. Um, I'm guessing also the University of Edinburgh. That might give them easier access to government funding. I don't know about that. Um, we did see a lot of some government funding popping up. So we had already Finland investing. I saw investments from Israel and I saw a huge investment from Netherlands. And with this incredible food inflation, it is possible that we are going to see more government spending because governments, they want, uh, yeah, they, they, they don't want to be dependent um, of, uh, of other governments to deliver them food but some countries like Singapore they had no choice before but thanks to uh, yeah, lab grown meat uh, and companies like solar food I do want to um, yeah solar food look at this article with solar food I really need to talk about that I love solar food so I've been saying that before that they're doing excellent they just got a 50 million uh, financing so it's a loan uh, for their factory that will enter production in 2023 so they're still on track guys i mean um agronomics they bought solar food well they got a stake in solar food uh pretty pretty cheap i mean in two years from now solar food could be ready to to start ipo and solar food could be um could be ready to make some profit this was an investment from september 2020 uh, probably started negotiating in summer when Corona was uh, very high, so probably they they got a cheap share of this of this company at the time. And uh, and look at how this company is doing; it's 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 going great. Um, yeah, uh, when we look a little bit further, we see um, here their plans. They're talking about automated production line, and what is more important, they say. It will be possible to know the food production price for up to two decades ahead, regardless of the climate, time of year, or global oil price. And if that doesn't draw in investors, I don't know what was. It's sustainable protein. It does not require a huge area of land. And look also at this video here. <music>
in conclusion, what do we expect from agronomics <laughs> in the coming uh, years? I'm still bullish in the coming years. I do think that their stock price could be affected by the VC winter. I think there's companies that could go bankrupt. I think there's companies that agronomics will be able uh, to pick up cheap. Uh, their agronomics is not going to go bankrupt. I could see increased funding from the government. I could see regulatory approval coming soon. Could see meat tasting. That's uh, so. There is a lot of things that are going to be positive for the stock. There is some things that are going to be negative for the stock. Um, I'm just going to sit and ride it out uh, for the time being. And um, yeah, everyone has to make their own decisions, of course. I do think it's a good long-term investment. I think this. The fact that we're going to be in an inflationary environment for a long time is not going to change anything for me. And most of all, I always thought a little bit as um, yeah, something we need to do. We need to do this as a society. We need to invest in cultivated food. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like my video, please like, please subscribe. And see you next time.